This material has been excerpted from the college television course, The Mechanical Universe, and re-edited specifically for use in the high school curriculum. The Mechanical Universe is funded by the Annenberg CPB Project, made possible by a grant from the National Science Foundation. Force equals mass times acceleration. Mechanics, the science of motion, can be summarized in that one equation, F equals MA. It is the heart of classical mechanics. When trying to describe the basic machinery of the world, a natural question is, where to begin? Isaac Newton began with three fundamental principles. Newton's laws. And with the incredible speed and elegance of unleashed genius, he explained the motion of almost everything on and above the surface of the earth. Refined to their essence, Newton's three laws are one profoundly powerful equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. Understand that equation, what it means and how to use it, and in the end, it's possible to understand the mechanical universe. At the same time, understand that considerable complexity can reside in what appears to be pure and simple. For example, a closer look at F equals MA immediately reveals two complications. First, F equals MA is a vector equation. Both force and acceleration are vectors. In other words, they have definite directions. In F equals MA, they must have the same direction. The second complication arises in the symbol A for acceleration. Remember, acceleration isn't the position of something, and it's not how fast something changes its position. Acceleration is how fast something changes its velocity. When a body or mass falls, gravity exerts a force, F. Force in the downward direction, of course and the result is acceleration. So there it is, F equals MA, acceleration and force in the same direction. Complicated yet beautiful in its simplicity. That's the well-known equation. Now in the case of a falling body, What's known about acceleration? It's constant for one thing. And for another, it's the same for all falling bodies in the idealized conditions of a vacuum. And what's more, it's called G. The force of the Earth's gravity on every falling body equals its mass times the acceleration g in the downward direction. 
This force is the body's weight. But this equation also describes motion for other than the downward direction. Gravity exerts the same force on a body, no matter which direction that body travels. Once a falling object's in motion, aside from air resistance, gravity is the only force acting on it. Whether dropped from a tower, shot from a towering mountain, or heaved by a towering mountain of a man. Measure. All moving objects fall under the influence of gravity, an equation that explains the path of any projectile on Earth is powerful indeed. And to see how it really works, it's necessary to go back to the beginning. With his first law, Newton embraced the idea of inertia. He wrote, everybody continues in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled to change that state by forces impressed upon it. Inertia was an idea that Newton inherited from Galileo. It was an extraordinary idea that, if illustrated with modern images, goes something along these lines. Once a body is in motion, it naturally continues in a straight line unless influenced by some force. Newton's second law indicates exactly how force changes the motion of an object. As Newton himself explained it, the change in motion is proportional to the force impressed, and it is made in the direction of the straight line in which the force is impressed. Newton used the word motion to mean momentum, the velocity of a body multiplied by its mass. To every action, there is always an equal reaction, or the mutual actions of two bodies upon each other are always equal and directed to contrary parts. Something cannot touch something else without being touched in return. In other words, bodies don't merely act, they interact with one another. At the same time, all three of Newton's laws act and interact throughout the physical world. And the trajectory of any projectile in a powerful and moving fashion demonstrates the consequences of Newton's three laws. When an object is launched and allowed to travel freely, what's the nature of its trajectory? No matter what the projectile and its purpose, could it be that all trajectories are essentially the same? Understanding the course of any projectile arises from an insight into the laws that govern force and motion. The path of any projectile can be described in the field of mathematics. In Newton's own words, then from these forces, I deduce the motions of the planets, the comets, the moon, and the sea. Newton wasn't the first to ponder the path of a flying object on Earth or that of one in the heavens. But he stood alone in his knowledge that the same laws govern the course of both. Still, long before Newton, 
Galileo Galilei described projectile motion perfectly. He realized bodies can fall vertically and move horizontally at the same time. From Galileo's point of view, which took in everything from the heavens to the heavenly gardens of the Renaissance, a body's motion has two components, completely independent of each other. Galileo's extraordinary vision is explained by Isaac Newton's extraordinary equation. The vertical component of the vector force is mg downward, or minus mg. No force at all acts in the horizontal direction. Only the vertical component of acceleration is minus g. In the horizontal direction, where there is no force, the acceleration is zero. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Since the horizontal speed is not changing, it must be constant. Constant speed in the horizontal direction and constant acceleration downward, both acting independently and simultaneously. These are the elements of Galileo's trajectories. And they're also the results of Newton's equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. F equals ma. But to understand the ongoing significance of F equals ma, it's necessary to return to a time before scholars had its help in grappling with worldly phenomena. To explain the unescorted motion of projectiles, such as spears, arrows, and cannonballs, scholars came up with the idea of impetus. Launching a projectile imbued it with a finite amount of impetus, which gave the object its motion. When its impetus was consumed, the object suddenly dropped to earth. Impetus wasn't a bad idea, but it fell short of its target. The medieval idea of impetus fell just short of the principle of inertia, which wasn't hit upon until the Renaissance. When the parabolic path of a real projectile was discovered by Galileo. In Galileo's words, it has been observed that missiles and projectiles describe a curved path of some sort. However, no one has pointed out the fact that this path is a parabola. With such insight, Galileo was living to see the 2,000 year reign of the Aristotelian worldview come to an end. And he wasn't alone. About the same time, Johannes Kepler, Christian Huygens in the Netherlands, and René Descartes in France, and others, also began to see the universe with new eyes. As extraordinary as this collection of scientists was, their individual viewpoints overlooked something, a synthesis, an organizing principle for the physical world as a whole. It would take extraordinary circumstances to explain the world. It would require the right person in the right place at the right time. The right time was 1665. And the right person was Isaac Newton. At only 23 years of age, Newton conceived the discoveries that would alter forever the world's understanding of the universe. With just three fundamental laws, Newton gave motion a cause, and in doing so, his dynamic principle completed Galileo's mathematical description of motion. In other words, while Galileo's kinematics described motion, Newton's dynamics explained it. 
Newton's first law is a statement of the law of inertia. Every body continues in a state of rest or of motion along a straight line with a constant speed unless an external force acts on it. Newton's second law, F equals ma, states that the vector sum of the external forces acting on a body of constant mass is equal to the object's mass times its acceleration. Newton's third law is a law of interaction. For every action, there is always an equal but opposite reaction. This material is based upon work supported by the National Science Foundation under grant number SPE 8318420. Any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation.